This next topic is called Evaluating Expressions invo Involving Inverse Trigonometric Functions. I'm going to start with a bit of review because we've actually already done some of the work that we need for this topic. So let's start with a problem like this. Instead of finding the sine of an angle, say you already know the sine of an angle is 4 over 5. And say you know that the angle is in quadrant 1. Find the tangent of that angle. I don't need to know what the angle is to do this. If this is my angle theta, and the sine of that angle is 4 over 5, then the third side of this triangle must be 3. That's a nice Pythagorean triple, by the way. Right triangle with angles with sides 3, 4, and 5. Now, my triangle is not to scale, but that doesn't really matter. I've only used it as a diagram to get to the place where I can find the tangent of that angle. Now that I know that this, the, the third side is 3, I can take the tangent, which is the opposite over the adjacent, as 4 over 3. So the answer is that the tangent of theta is 4 over 3. And I never found the angle. I don't need it. I just need the lengths of the three sides. In particular, I need the lengths of these two sides, but I was given these two sides, and I found the third side. All right, so that's one aspect. That's one way to look at problems like this. But let's take a look at another. This time, I want to find the sine of the tangent inverse of 3 eighths. Now, it doesn't look like it on the surface, but this is the same kind of problem. If I know that the tangent of an angle is 3 over 8, then I know the opposite and the adjacent of a triangle. From the perspective of this angle right here, opposite is 3, adjacent is 8. So the tangent of this angle is 3 over 8. And remember that that's what tangent inverse means. The angle whose tangent is 3 over 8. Well, that's this angle here, and I don't care how big it actually is. I don't need the, the numerical measurement of this angle to find the sine of this angle. The sine of this angle is opposite of our hypotenuse. So all I have to do now is find the hypotenuse. Now, the hypotenuse is, we'll, we'll call it c, since c squared is equal to 3 squared plus 8 squared, and so c is equal to the square root of that. That's going to be 9 plus 64, that's 73. So my third side here is root 73. I don't need to know the size of this angle. I just need to know the lengths of the sides. Now, to take the, the sine of that angle, I take the opposite over the adjacent, sorry, the opposite over the hypotenuse, and the answer is 3 over root 73. The point I want to make here, particularly, is that this thing right here is an angle. That's like saying theta. If I know what theta is, I can find its sine. If I don't know what theta is, then I can still find its sine if I know the lengths of the appropriate sides. And to do that, I had to unpick this tangent problem. The angle whose tangent is 3 eighths is this angle right here, and the sine of that angle is 3 over root 73. All right, now that we've got that review under our belts, let's take a look at how we can apply this in a sum of angles problem. Since we're dealing with sums of angles, the sine of a sum of two angles, for example, we can now do a problem like this. As long as I remember that that is an angle and this is an angle, in fact, I could even call those angles A and B if I wanted to, then know that I don't need to find the sizes of those angles to be able to do this problem. This is kind of just a compound problem like the one we did before. So let me use a different color for my highlighter for one of these, and I'll do angle A in white highlighter and white pen, and I'll do angle B in yellow highlighter and yellow pen. So here's my angle A, and I know that its tangent is one third, opposite over adjacent. Here's angle B, and I know that its tangent is 1 over 2, opposite over adjacent. That's angle B. What I want to find is the sine of the sum of those two angles. Well, the sine of angle A plus angle B is equal to the sine of A times the cosine of B plus the sine of B times the cosine of A. Let's see if we can figure out 
what goes in those four spots. Let's start with angle A. I want the sine of A. In fact, let me highlight those as well. These are all things that deal with angle A. I need both the sine and the cosine of A. Well, that's easy because A has a sine of one over, well, I need to know what that hypotenuse is, but I can find that. It's the square root of one plus nine, which is a square root of 10. Let's go ahead and figure out what angle B's third side is as well, or triangle B. Triangle B is here, and its third side is the square root of one plus four, which is the square root of five. Now I have all three sides for both triangles. So I can find the sine of A, it's one over root 10. And the cosine of A is three over root 10. So I can fill in those blanks. And then I can find the sine of B, let me highlight, sine of B and cosine of B. The sine of B is one over root five. The cosine of B is two over root five. I can fill in those blanks. Sine of B is one over root five. Cosine of B is two over root five. And then I have two over five root 10 plus three over five root 10, which is five over five root 10, which is one over root 10. And there's my exact value. I never found either angle A or angle B. I have no idea what size they are. My diagrams even look pretty much the same, even though angle B is clearly uh, shorter. No, it's the same height, but it's, it's shorter in this direction. The hypotenuse is definitely shorter than the hypotenuse of, of the triangle that, that has angle A in it, but that doesn't matter. These are just quick sketches. They, they don't have to be to scale. Now, we've done a, a problem where we took the sine of the sum of two angles, both of which we had the tangent for. So the sine of a tangent inverse plus a tangent inverse. You could get the cosine of a tangent inverse plus a tangent inverse. You could get this, the tangent of a sine inverse plus a sine inverse. You could even get the sine of a cosine inverse plus a tangent inverse, for example. So be prepared to do all those different types of problems, but they're really all the same kind of problem. You have the tangent inverse of one angle, and you have the tangent inverse of another angle, find the third side, well, my, this might be cosine inverse, right? You have the cosine inverse of a second angle, find the third side, figure out what the sines, cosines, tangents, whatever you need for those, what, depending on the formula that you're, that you're using, uh, and you're done. The trick here really was recognizing that this is an angle and this is an angle. So I can use the formula, in this case, it's the sine formula, but a sign of the sum of two angles.